And as a brilliant a broadcast as that is, I, I want to com contrast it to a, um, a cartoon that was done by Bill Malden, who created the characters Willie and Joe, which uh, I think sums up the, uh, the GI's attitude towards the enemy in Europe. Don't know if you can read that caption. We see a uh, shivering, emaciated dog trying to get into a cave where Willie and Joe are sheltered. And one says, let him in. I want to see a critter I can feel sorry for. Now, Malden was um, <clears throat> from Arizona. He was about 22, 23 uh, at the war's end. He was with the infantry in Italy for most of the war. Um, and uh, at about this time, he, uh, there he is, at about this time he won a Pulitzer for this cartoon. There's a news item saying that uh, fresh-spirited American troops are bringing in thousands of war-weary uh, enemy prisoners, and they're virtually indistinguishable here. Everyone is just sick and tired. We'll go through a few molding cartoons. Here's a uh, chaplain, forever, amen, hit the dirt. That's uh, Joe, uh, Willie rather speaking, uh, saying, I feel like a fugitive from the law of averages. <laughs> At the time of uh, Malden's Pulitzer, Time Magazine asked him to do a cover. So here's Willie in color. That's from uh, June of 45. This is a typical Malden scene. That's, that's Joe having some coffee. Yeah. Who is it? <laughs> and uh, Willie says, it will comfort my old woman to know that I, no, for her to know that I've given up rye whiskey and 10 cent cigars. <laughs> now Willie was married and uh, he's got, just gotten a picture of his son. My son, five days old, cute kid, ain't he? So now we're in May, and this is a scene of the German surrender. And we're going to hear Charles Collingwood of CBS's uh, description of the scene. General Yodel, Chief of Staff of the German Army, signed the last documents. He sat there very straight, with his head bent over the papers. And when he had signed the last one, he put the cap back on the pen and looked up at the men sitting across the plain wooden table. Opposite him sat General Beagle Smith, Eisenhower's Chief of Staff. As he looked to his right, General Yodel could see a big, powerful man in the uniform of a Russian general sitting next to General Smith. He was General Susan Apollo, the Russian delegate. Over his shoulder peered the extraordinary head of another Russian. The head was bared as a gourd, with fierce, unwavering eyes whose bright and sinister gaze did not for an instant leave the drawn face of General Yodel. Yodel did not meet his eyes for long. Then, General Yodel looked again at General Smith. I would like to say something, he said. Smith nodded. Yodel rose stiffly to his feet. Herr General, he said in a voice that choked and almost broke, with this signature, the German people and the German armed forces are, for better or worse, delivered into the victor's hands. In this hour, I can only express the hope that the victor will treat them with generosity. Then General Yodel sat down quickly. No one else said anything. The Germans looked around as they're wondering what to do next. And then another now from General Smith, they got up. General Yodel is a and Admiral Friedberg, who commands the German Navy. With Yodel in the lead, they walked quickly out of the room. Again, a very dramatic, effective description of the scene, but for uh, you know, the, the GI sentiment, I'm going to return to Bill Malden. Here's his cartoon from VE Day. Malden, uh, he drew these cartoons for Stars and Stripes, and they were eventually picked up um, by a syndicate in the United States and were seen in quite a few newspapers uh, as he was doing them. And um, as the war drew to a close in 1945, Malden had an idea that he would kill off Willie and Joe uh, on the last day of the war, that they would be, you know, shot at that point, uh, because he said that was a common fear 
among soldiers, that they would get all the way to the end only to die on the last day, you know, as, uh, as happens in All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, Stars and Stripes said no to that idea. Willie and Joe were much too popular, much too popular for that. So here's his VE Day uh, cartoon. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, The hell with it. I ain't standing up until he does. <laughs> um, now, Stars and Stripes uh, was widely read in every theater of the war, and uh, so was a magazine called Yank. Yank was something very special. It was only published for about three and a half years. It ended in December of 1945. It was uh, a 100% uh, production of soldiers. Uh, every photograph, every word written, every drawing, every bit of it was generated by soldiers. And uh, this is from shortly after VE Day. Uh, we've got a GI chatting up a female uh, Russian soldier here. Uh, I don't know if you can read the caption there, but the, uh, there was an article in, in this issue called The Life and Death of the Non-Fraternization Policy. Uh, this was one of the less successful policies of the war. Uh, <laughs> Um, and they finally came to an official end uh, after VE Day. Things loosened up a lot for, for soldiers in, in Europe at that point. And uh, so here's um, from uh, the same issue of Yank, Boy Meets Girl, legally. <laughs> this was a great relief. Uh, but then we go to, but it wasn't, you know, this, there were still, of course, there were, there were language and cultural barriers. Uh, they didn't uh, always understand each other very well. So here we have Bill Malden again. I asked her to teach me to yodel. She taught me to yodel. <laughs> now, many soldiers in Europe, um, you know, however glad they were about the end of the war in Europe, uh, were just uh, destined to be sent to the Pacific to, to finish that part of the war. So here's Yank, again, Pacific bound. Um, I want to say a little bit more about Yank. They uh, had many different kinds of features. This was one called Main Street America. They would run pictures of towns back home for uh, guys who were homesick and, you know, wondered what, uh, what Main Street in their hometown looked like, whether it was Providence, Rhode Island, or New Orleans. Uh, you know, it was a regular feature with them. Uh, they, got, they did a lot of things that were pretty controversial. controversial. This is an article on uh, the Nisei, who, uh, you know, legendary outfit in, in Italy, highly decorated. Um, and this is about the problems they were facing, Nisei, that is, American-born Japanese soldiers who were uh, returning to the United States and finding that they were no more welcome than uh, Japanese who served in the Japanese Army. And they were looking ahead, post-war issues, you know, what are you going to do when you get back? And uh, this is actually from Time Magazine from uh, May or June of 45. You know, there was a great relief that followed the end of the war in Europe. Uh, and a lot of, um, you see a lot of propaganda from this time reminding people that the war is not over. And this is unusually graphic, you know, to see a depiction of a dead American soldier, you know, reminding people he's not celebrating. The war is not won yet. Now, VJ Day came August 14th, 1945. Uh, but it had been anticipated for a while, not just because of the two atomic bombs, but because I think on uh, August 10th or perhaps the 11th, uh, Japan had indicated that it would surrender and was trying to get better terms. That wasn't going to happen. 